Hi and welcome to the show. Now deciding what career to dedicate years of your life to can be a really hard decision to make, but don't worry because every week we look at three different careers and provide you with some really helpful advice along the way to help make that all important career decision a bit easier. In today's show, we take a look at the flooring industry where we give 17-year-old Mai Tua the opportunity to find out what it takes to lay the carpet straight in Auckland. Ben is already skilled with a hammer and knows he wants to work outdoors, but has he got a head for hikes? We send him off for a couple of days working in the roofing industry to see if that could be just the job for him. And 16-year-old Sinead from Avondale College has always enjoyed cutting and styling hair. We find out if working in the hairdressing industry is just the job for her. So let's head off and see how my tour gets on as he gets a taste of what his future might hold. Um, my name's Mai Tua, I'm 17 years of age. Well, I'm very physical, very strong and tough, and I'm looking for a physical job. Well, carpet and vinyl installation might be the job for you, Mai Tua. Stuart Steele has been a carpet and vinyl layer for 38 years, and he's gonna give Mai Tua the lay of the land when it comes to an apprenticeship in carpet and vinyl installation. Well, the main quality you need besides communication skills is a good attitude. An apprentice learns a range of skills from planning and cutting in the workshop to on-site installation. This is so they can learn to read floor plans and identify different types of vinyl, carpet and underlay. Good man, grab it, let's go. Right, we're on now on site. This is the house we're going to lay carpet in today. It is somebody else's house. You respect that house and you respect the people that are working in it. Be safe site at all times. Well, yeah, the advantages of doing apprenticeship is that you're learning a skill, you're learning life skills, and it's something that you will have forever and a day. Because we've got the smoothies around the outside, yep. and the smoothies is the gripper, which I'll show you in a minute, you've got to sweep the floor clean so there's no fire and matter underneath the smoothie. Yep. Because if it's sitting high, then you'll get a hump in your carpet. Well, this is our smoothage. This is what the carpet hooks onto. Yep. See, you feel the little spikes on it? That's what the carpet hooks onto. And these are concrete nails, so we can anchor it to the floor. There's the hammer. Think you can do it? Yep. Do it. Once all the smooth edge is prepped, it's time to lay out the underlay, which turns out to be harder than my tour expected. So, my tour, yep. here's our underlay. Okay. And it goes one way. Give it a kick out with your foot. Get out trusty Stanley knife. Get all the underlay. Put air under it. Look, I can still see more stuff on the floor. You sure you swept the floor? And there's a bit under the door there. I'm going to fire you. Roll it out. Now, you know how to use a knife? Just through one layer. Supposed to cut it, not chew it. <laughs> Throughout your apprenticeship, you, you get faster at the tasks that you're given to do. After you've done your time and you become a contractor, then you choose your own speed. And if I can see your face, you're not working. Head down and bum up. Before we have to go into that corner, we've got to tape all the joints. In the bathroom, work is underway, preparing the floor for a vinyl covering. Stuart takes my tour to have a look. Now sanding it to take all the dirt, all the old paint, plaster, everything off the floor so that the adhesive wood stick to it. The sander he's using is an edging sander that is usually used in conjunction with a drum sander, but in a small area it can be used on its own. He's got the correct attire on, he's really good fitting clothing, uh, he's got earmuffs, he's got eye protection and he's got masks. He's now putting the sealer on uh, and he's just using his standard paint roller, just gives an even finish all over it. That seals the floor. Any liquid that goes on the floor at a later date doesn't go past it because it's working as a moisture barrier. Because I'm part of the floor, of course, if it gets wet, it goes to the biscuits. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're laying a sheet vinyl, a hard sheet vinyl, or soft sheet vinyl, or, or tiles, or even um, a wood grain tile. All the floor prep is the same. He's now stringlining the floor out, marking it. Uh, not necessarily marking the centre of the area, but just giving a straight line, length and width, and the centre is square. When you're laying these areas, you never start on a wall, because the wall may not be square or straight, so you make your own central area where you start from. 
Most of the tiles, not all of them, but most of the tiles have a uh, direction indicator on the back. That way you put all your tiles the same way so that it looks uniform, but you can alternate them to give you a light dark pattern. You put them all into place, keeping as square as you can, cutting in your small tiles, and then once we've done that area, then we can glue it out, fit it, and then the rest of the area will come off that. And then we clean it all up, and we stand back and look at it and think, yes, that job well done. This is job satisfaction. Don't my dear, this is how the vinyl tiles are laid. Now let's get back to your carpet. All right? Cheers. All right, we'll start down here. One of the most important parts of the job is called profiling, where the site is measured and the carpet cut to size. And what we're doing here is Philip is marking out the carpet with chalk. Now he's measured it, as you said, saw him do on the plan. Now he's transferring those measurements onto the carpet. Mark it, and then we cut it. And then basically the bit we take from here will fit basically straight into the room. So there's probably half a dozen specialised tools that, that you would use. You learn knife skills, you learn safety skills, uh, you learn mathematical skills, so you can do your own plans, you learn to measure. And if you rub your fingers along quite hard, you feel a smoothage underneath. Yeah. You're not pushing hard. I want to see blood on your fingers. <laughs> so I know you're doing it. Come on, I can't hear it going along there. No, don't pat it, push it hard. That's it, now I can hear the pins. All right, that'll do, you can stop there. All right, now we come, we've fitted the carpet, we've stretched it, now we're going to trim it. Yep. And that's what this tool is. Just goes in there, and then you just slide it along. Do you want to have a turn? Yes. Now I'm starting to get the hang of it, and yeah, I'm starting to enjoy it. If you have the ability to ask and have good work ethics with it and a good attitude, don't go wrong. And he has all three. Personally, I would take him on as an apprentice. I definitely see like myself as being a, a carpet layer. I got to meet new people and my mentor was really great and he taught me a lot. The National Certificate in Flooring is made up of six strands and each is a qualification in its own right. Course fees vary depending on the strands and the training you undertake and they are one of the cheapest training options available. A good wage layer can earn between forty-five and fifty-five thousand dollars a year, and contractors can earn one hundred thousand dollars a year or more. Well, my tour certainly seems to have done well in a job that could lead on to a great career. Good on him. Now, could this industry also be a possibility for you, or maybe you'd rather work on the outside of a building? Then stick around because this next career could be just your thing. This is just my job. Welcome back to Just A Job, where we look at all kinds of options to help you learn more about the different career opportunities that are available to you. Next up, Ben tries his hand at a career in the roofing industry. Um, I'm Ben Fahey, I'm 17, I go to Oreo College, and I'm interested in the roofing industry. My strengths are um, hands-on work, physical work, and outdoor work. To find out if Ben has what it takes to become a roofer, he'll be mentored by Michael Walters, who's been working in the plumbing and roofing industry for 15 years. Generally, you've got to be hard working to be uh, in the roofing industry. Good team work is required, reasonably fit, not worried about heights, basically love working outside. Yeah, come on, meet, meet the guys, Ben. Hey, this is uh, Ben, he's going to be roofing with us today. G'day, guys. Hey, Ben. Hammer and pouch here, Ben. I'll uh, chuck that on, eh, and I'll get you to nail these uh, battens off soon. The guys have already uh, pinned out the roof here for us. Uh, so that's our first, first step, uh, just so the battens are the right space for the tiles. Uh, then we'll lay the paper over the top of those uh, pins and then nail the battens off. The, the, the paper here is just basically uh, an insulation sort of thing. So uh, we'll chuck this on and um, I'll lay it out and just lay the battens down eh, and we'll start nailing this off. Yep. It's on job training, you earn what you learn. Generally teamwork I suppose is your, is your first thing that you learn on site with the guys. Um, if you're not a team player, very hard to be successful in the industry. Yeah, I mean, it's real good, quite easy to actually walk around on this roof, not that hard. Yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. So, are these, are these the easiest product to use on the roof? Concrete tiles and colour steel tiles are completely different I suppose. Um, different set of skills you need to lay, lay either. Concrete holes just just as fast to lay. You can probably lay in, in more severe conditions. The colour steel is probably the most commonly used. It's lighter than concrete, so there's a bit more bracing involved with the concrete roof. Uh, with the uh, the colour steel, obviously a lighter material, so you haven't got as much uh, weight. This job here, we're obviously laying these tiles here, and what we're going to do is we're going to feed them onto this uh, escalator, 
and uh, throw them up there. And uh, the other boys will be up there with the gang and we'll spread them out. As well as Michael and Ben, the roofing gang is made up of another three guys. Tavita Vata is new to the industry and wants to make a career of it. How long have you been roofing for? Uh, I've been roofing for about six months now. How did you get into the job? Uh, I was an uh, ad in the paper. Do you enjoy it? or? Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I do enjoy it. Eh? Um, it is hard at the start, um, but I get a good workout on loading on the elevator. Yeah. And you just got to be a bit careful on the roof. Yeah. might fall through and stuff, eh? but you get used to, used to it. Apprenticeship is a good way to start roofing. Uh, it gives you a good grounding and um, you get a qualification to move through into a higher training in an industry which is, which is constantly growing and it gives you a chance to um, own your own business and um, make your own money and be your own boss. Nick Popplewell is into his 10th year of roofing and recently set himself up as a contractor. What's the best thing you enjoy about it? Um, I guess travelling and meeting new people, you know, you're in a different area, you're not stuck in the same place every day, day in, day out, you know, you're, you're mixing with different people every day and, and uh, the work's physical, you know, keeps you fit. Ben soon realises there's no time to hesitate when unloading tiles, and once he's got a feel for it, he tries his hand at loading, which takes a lot of focus. Yeah, I'm feeling good. It's been a good day, so yeah, I'm sort of used to doing hands-on work, so yeah, it's not too bad. It's just the height to start off with, but yeah, I've got used to those now, so yeah, it's been good. Yeah, the guys are good. They're real supportive and teach me lots, so it's good. Okay, let's we'll lay these tiles. You've got a, uh, on these tiles, you've got an underside here and you've got the overside, yep. so it just laps over top of your, your tile there. Just make sure they're square, line up the other tile and we'll, we'll slow this, uh, this row through. And then we'll come back and uh, nail uh, every second hole off on, uh, on this row. Well, once you get into roofing, you can obviously uh, move into the marketing side and owning your own business, or you can move into the, the clothing side, um, running gangs. Um, so again, it can lead into project management. Um, you can go into uh, a corporation, which is a, or a larger roofing company, uh, be involved with them running gangs. Um, also, there's chances of working overseas, uh, so it's definitely a good, a good career path. By the end of the day, the roof is on. He ended it really well today. He um, was good on his feet. He obviously had a bit of uh, skill with carpentry skills, so he was uh, straight into that. And he's going really well for guys and started throwing the tiles down, started laying some of the roof, and he's, you know, he'll be good. We'll have to get him back to do the, the rest of the roof uh, when, when the builders have finished their weatherboards. The last two days have been very good, learned quite a lot. Well, probably the highlight would probably be um, putting the roof on today, which is good. Those guys made it real great, and um, it was just interesting. It's a whole good experience. To gain a national certificate in roofing, you will need to complete a combination of workbooks, workshops, on-job practice, and practical assessment. The following options are available. Working as a roofer can give you a great future, especially if you want to be self-employed and own your own business. Great money can be made for those willing to put in the effort. For contact details and further information, call 0800 277 736. Well, maybe after that a career in roofing might be your thing. If it is, then you can find out more about that career and all the careers featured on the shows on our website. So stick around because I'll be giving you those details at the end of the program. After the break, we look at what it takes to start a career in hairdressing. This is Just The Job. You're watching Just The Job, and if you're thinking about a career, or maybe you're stuck in a career and you're wanting a bit of a change, then stay tuned, because this is the series that could spark a turning point when it comes to your work life. Next up, Sinead has always enjoyed cutting and styling here and thinks that her interest might also offer her a career. So, let's see how she gets on. My name's Sinead, I'm 16 years old and I'm from Avondale College. I'm interested in hairdressing because I enjoy cutting hair and styling it. Hairdressing is an exciting creative industry which offers huge opportunities. Betjeman's, an award-winning salon, has a staff of 24. Eight are presently undergoing their training to gain a national certificate in hairdressing. Owners Grant and Fifth Betjeman explain what qualities are needed in an apprentice. I require someone who's passionate about hairdressing, who's had an interest in fashion, who presents well, 
who um, has a commitment to doing a three or four year training with us and who will work in and blend with the family um, feeling that we have in our salon. Jeff Whiting is the salon manager and will be mentoring Sinead on numerous aspects of the job. So is the first day of your hairdressing career? Yes. Great. We'll get you to um, just basically see if an overview of how the salon works. Sinead's thrown straight into it. In such a busy salon, there's no time to stand around idle. I'll show you a little trick. Blow dryer is a really crucial part of our equipment. So this is just the way that we tend to tidy them up. So it doesn't pull the cord and it just leaves it nice and tidy. Bring it at that speed. Yeah. So you really want to be kind of... A key job for the apprentices is to pamper the clients with coffee. It's the first espresso you've ever made. Yep. Awesome. After the thumbs up from Jeff, Sinead's new skill is put into action. You're welcome. I made it myself. Tiffany Harley is into her third year of her apprenticeship and was a regional winner of the Hairdressing ITO Apprentice of the Year in 2006. It's not exactly glamorous when you first start because you're doing a lot of floor sweeping, holding foils, shampooing, that sort of thing. But it quickly, you know, you quickly get up there and you start doing colours and you're learning things constantly. Another essential part of the job is people skills. You've got to be able to communicate, so you've got to yeah, force yourself to get in there and just, it makes the whole day. Like, if you're happy, your clients are happy, everybody's happy, especially within the team as well. It's important that everybody pulls together and just has that good environment. You know? Part of the apprenticeship is that they do off-job training, so they have to be um, prepared to do that. So some of them are working a six-day week, which for someone who's just come out of school is a huge commitment, and often they're coming out of school, they're living away from home, so they've got a lot to manage, especially in that first year. So how are you finding the apprenticeship? It's amazing, I'm learning so much um, in this short amount of time, six months, I'm already doing retouches and um, shampooing and starting to learn how to blow waves. Every Wednesday the apprentices have in-house training, however today all the staff are there as a Curate's rep is introducing a new product. Wet the hair. Just yep. So we're an industry that are constantly upskilling ourselves and, and you know, I believe that when you stop learning in this industry, you, you don't last long in it because there's always the need to be progressing your work and to be learning new things all the time. And that's one of the things that's really exciting about it is that we have these opportunities to, to go anywhere with our work creatively. How does it feel? It feels great. You can even go a little bit harder if you want. It's an amazing sort of social permission to be able to be in that close to people and have your hands on their head. So, you know, you're, you're in quite a sort of sacred space if you like so you have to enjoy people and you have to be able to connect with them. Sinead's just completed her first hair wash so how was the experience for Jeff? It's a really tricky thing to wash someone's hair at the basin it's not easy it's the angles are all different it's it's really funny she I felt that she was really aware that she had a human being in front of her and she was being really careful so um, yeah I thought she was fantastic yeah really good. So, what does the future hold once an apprentice completes their four-year training and graduates? Um, you can build a clientele and you can make very good money. We have several stylists here who are earning in excess of $100,000 a year. Our industry is so transportable. I mean, we've worked in, in England, Italy, South Africa, Indonesia, Russia. It can take you to um, working in the film industry, fashion shoots. And like the Betchmans, you could end up owning your own successful salon. So does Sinead make the cut? Sinead's definitely got what it takes. She's been great with clients and she's been really lovely to have in the salon. Really lovely. Her personality is wonderful, you know, she's not over the top, but she's really genuine, so fantastic. So that's the end of your time with us. How, how have you found it? Really good, interesting. Yep. yep. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we see people that have your calibre. We're really keen to employ people like you. I think you really fit in really well and you've melded in really well with the team in a really short time. So yeah, we would love to have you apply for a job with us when you graduate from school. Um, Jeff offering me a job was pretty overwhelming and really good to know that I'm suitable for the job. Yeah, I think I'd really be interested in taking them up on that offer. Yeah. The entry requirements to start an apprenticeship in hairdressing require you to have a minimum of three years of secondary and or tertiary education and subjects in English, maths, art and design and science are useful.
To gain a national certificate in hairdressing usually takes four years of on-the-job training as well as attending courses at a polytechnic or private providers as directed by the hairdressing ITO. The hairdressing ITO pays up to 75% towards off-the-job training course fees on behalf of the apprentice. Apprentices usually start on a salary of $15,000 and once qualified and experienced, earn on average of $50,000. However, if self-employed and on commission, a lot more money can be made. That definitely looks like just the job for Sinead. So thanks Sinead, Ben and Maitua for all being a part of today's program. Today, there are so many different careers out there and deciding which one's right for you can be a really hard decision to make on your own. So we certainly hope our programs will help you to decide, but to help you even more, we have the lovely Sarah from Career Services who has this week's tip for getting you that dream job. A quick word here to parents, teachers, friends and everyone who offers advice to young people making career decisions. You're known as influencers and it's important to think about whether you're having a positive or negative influence, encouraging career exploration or limiting it. You may be asked about career pathways outside your own experience and that's okay, you can still help that young person to explore and gather more information. What's important is that they decide on a career pathway that's right for them. Well, that's it for this week, but we are back again next week with another three careers and of course, more helpful advice. All the information about the careers you've just seen and for more information about how to make that right career choice can be found by simply going to our program website www.tvnz.co.nz and entering the keywords just the job. Happy hunting and I'll see you next week. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.